How to Change the World is an annual two-week intense design studio that all students from across the engineering faculty, including computer scientists and management students, take at the end of their second year. Now, How to Change the World sounds like an audacious title, but changing the world is what engineers are training to do and do every day in their day jobs. It's a bit intimidating, especially because of the title, is How to Change the World. It's quite broad scope, but then they really help you to guide it to something sort of smaller. I think what's really interesting about the sort of problems we set is that when people see the name How to Change the World, they think these problems are huge and very, going to be very difficult to really get into. How are you going to change the world? But I think what we hope the students will realise is that actually to change the world, often it's a really small thing that needs to be done. This is completely different because we're looking at a real world challenge and we're looking at our skills and how we can apply those skills to the real world challenge. We bring in challenge partners from organisations that are dealing with how do you solve transport for London, how do you bring energy to rural parts of Africa and enable the students to work with them, supported by us, to come up with first a scope of the problem and then design of potential solutions at the end. I think it's really important to give uh, young engineers an opportunity to practice what will form the core of their professional lives. Problems don't come in neat little packages. They're, they're big, they're messy. It's nice to be able to have um, opinions from the other departments as well. and It kind of broadens your view on, um, on how to tackle the same issue. For me it's fun because I'm not an engineer, I'm a mathematician and I've become an economist. So working with engineers and trying to get them to say, well, you know, how much is this going to cost and who's going to pay for it? Nowadays, professionals are not poor physics, mathematics or engineers. Everything is mixed and future professionals, they're going to need a wide range of skills and everything is going to be more confusing in that in one sense, but more rich, richer in another one. So this is much needed. This is the second year I've been part of the challenge. It's always nice to see how students of quite a good institutions, how they look at the problem and what solutions they can offer. It's definitely an exciting prospect that they might come up with something new or different that we haven't thought of and that, that could actually work in London. The results will be announced at one o'clock, but I don't mind whether we win or not. It was a really good experience. I think um, bring in different disciplines together and then bring in other professionals from outside to talk to them about even other issues that they might not have thought, to, thought about is, is an excellent approach and will really prepare them um, for the real world that they'll be working in. Uh, the winner is Group 7. Tell them what were you doing? Um, our idea was a uh, modular car, so we'd have like a small two-seater um, engine module and then additional seater modules that you could attach when you need them, so you don't use a car that's too big for your purpose. We called it the Lego car because it's a nice catchy name. The How to Change the World programme reflects a larger commitment on the part of UCL Engineering. I mean, How to Change the World is our strap line. Uh, we have it on the front of our buildings, we have it on our website, we have it on all the literature we provide, and it reflects our understanding about what it is that engineers do. It reflects our global commitment, it reflects our social commitment, it reflects our understanding that engineers change lives for people in many important ways.